Okay, so we've got a statistics question here. We need to find the maximum likelihood estimate of sigma. Now, sigma is part of this normal distribution here, where n, which is the normal distribution with parameters mu, which is the mean and the variance sigma squared, and the PDF is given as f of x given sigma is one over sigma square root of two pi, exponential of minus one half, x minus mu over sigma, all squared. Then these are the parameters for the normal distribution. X is in the reals, mu is in the reals, and sigma has to be greater than zero, of course. So we need to find this parameter here for sigma. So the first of all, we need to find the log likelihood. So the log likelihood with regards to sigma equals i equals one to n of the log of this function here. So just to save a bit of time, I'm just going to write it down as it's given here, as it is here. So the log of f of x given sigma, that's what we need to do. So now what we need to do, just to simplify this up a little bit, we need to take the log of this function here. So that equals i equals 1 to n. Now I want the log of this. So the reciprocal of something with a log property, that becomes negative log. So all in the bracket, negative log sigma times square root of 2 pi. So that takes care of this term here. Now I need to take care of this term here. Now exponential and log are inverse functions, so they cancel each other out. So all we've got to do now is write what's inside of this bracket here. So now all we write is minus one half x minus mu. Now, as we're summing all the x's, and that's the data, we need to put the i in there. And then divide that by sigma, and then squared. Okay, close the bracket off. Okay, now we need to just simplify this term up a little bit more to make it easier to handle. So we're summing up all of these, and we're summing up all of these, basically. So let's just simplify this up and see if we can get rid of this part here. So the log likelihood with respect to sigma now becomes, right, we'll take care of this term here. So from i equals one to n of all these, we just substitute an n in front of here. That becomes minus n log sigma square root of two pi. So we can just put that all in there. Now we need to simplify this one. So minus one half, that's not going to change. But now we need to keep the summation for the data, which is the xi's. So just write that in a slightly smaller term, if you don't mind. i equals one to n of the xi's minus mu divided by sigma. And again, this is all squared. So I can write this here. And that's all squared. Okay, this one here, now I need to just try and get this uh, sigma on its own, and try and get this 2 pi out of it somehow. And then this one here, maybe try and get this xi and the mu separated from the sigma. So let's go with that. So we can rewrite this with the log property as these two here, we could say they're multiplied. We could say minus n log sigma minus n log square root of 2 pi. So that takes care of that. This one here, now what we can say is that instead of having squared for the whole thing, we could square the top and bottom. So the top will be squared and the bottom would be squared. And as the xi's are only concerned with this summation here, this sigma we could bring out of this summation here. So now we could do minus one over two, and then the sigma is squared. And then that would be multiplied now. This would now just be a one, so we can just write it as it is. i equals one to n, xi minus mu. 
and again this is all squared okay so next thing what we need to write is try and simplify this one this one and this one a little bit more so minus n log sigma we can't really do much with that this one here becomes a constant so we just can write c for that so we just call that constant one and then this one here what we can write it now is one over two sigma squared and as we sum in all the xi's minus mu squared what we need can do now what we can do now is to write this as simply i equals one to n xi minus mu and that's squared okay so now we need to find the next stage in finding this maximum likely estimate for the sigma now what we do next is we take the derivative of the log likelihood and then set that to zero and that should give us some idea of what the maximum likelihood estimate is so now what we do is we take the derivative with respect to sigma of this so minus n log sigma well, the derivative of that is simply minus n over sigma. That's pretty straightforward. Now we set this up as a constant because there's nothing here to do with sigma. So then that one here just disappears. So it's good to write that just as a constant. And then take the derivative of this one, minus one over two sigma squared. Well, the, time, the sign is gonna flip. The two, because of the chain rule is gonna go on the top. So it's a two over two sigma and then that is cubed and then this one here is just a constant as far as sigma is concerned so we just write that back in so i equals one to n of the x i is minus the mu squared okay so now we're going to set this to zero so now what we want is the derivative with respect to sigma equals zero which equals minus n over sigma plus two over two sigma cubed. So we can now cancel that two out. Just put a one in there and it's over sigma cubed. And then it's just the xi's minus the mu squared. And let's put the parameters in and it goes one to n. Okay, now we'll set this to zero. So what we end up now is, if we just put this on the other side, we get n over sigma equals one over sigma cubed, and then this sum term here. And that's squared. Okay, so now what we should do, just to try and get this sigma on its own, if we can multiply this side by sigma cubed, we can cancel this out, and then we end up with something different on this side with the sigma on its own. So now if we take this term and multiply by sigma cubed. Okay, so now distributing this sigma cubed, we get n sigma squared, that will be what that one is. This one and this one, they're gonna cancel out. And then we get i equals one to n of xi minus mu, and that's all squared. Okay. Now what we need to do now is just divide both sides by n and we've got this sigma squared on its own. So now we've got sigma squared equals 1 over n, i equals 1 to n of the xi minus the mu squared. Okay, so now we've got a maximum likelihood estimate for sigma squared. So what we need to do now is going to write MLE or sigma hat that equals square root one over n and then the sum of all these terms i equals one to n of the xi minus the mu squared and that will incorporate all those inside square root that's our maximum likelihood estimator of sigma and that looks about right as well because that's what we'd expect the standard deviation to look something like Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to test and make sure this is the appropriate by taking the second derivative. So I'm going to rub this out 
and then we okay so now we're ready to take the second derivative of what this term is so we're just going to go second derivative with this regards to sigma so minus n sigma will now become positive n sigma squared 2 divided by 2 sigma cubed or we can just cross that out and put that as a 1 same with this one change that to a 1 so 1 over sigma cubed will now become minus 3 sigma to the 4 and then we're going to substitute this back in here that's just a constant as far as sigma is concerned okay now we need to do something to try and handle with this so what we've got here we've got 1 over n times this is our standard deviation basically so what we can do is like we said earlier in the video so equals 1 over n times sum of xi minus mu squared and then that will be the square root of that so now what we need to do is take that substitute this into here bearing in mind that so equals square root of that one squared okay let's go with that so now we end up with n over sigma squared that becomes now n over so this one here sigma squared that becomes 2 so 3 over 2 so then this one here becomes just so this one here sorry so is squared then here we've got the so well then we've got a 1 over n so we now we need to multiply this by n to make this with n and then we've got 3n times simple uh, sorry standard deviation okay so now this we'll cross out with this leaving us with n minus standard deviation minus 3n standard deviation which just equals minus 2n over the standard deviation and we can say that this is always going to be less than zero because 2n is always going to be positive then put a negative of a positive gives us a negative number and this one here as it's the sum of squares this is always going to be positive and especially as it's inside the square root symbol so therefore we can say that this is a good estimator so this is a good estimator okay and that's by the der second derivative rule Okay.